Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tate Film Series Tropicalia and Beyond Dialogues in Brazilian Film History. My name is Carly Whitefield, Assistant Curator of Film at Tate Modern. And uh, yeah, it's been really, really wonderful series so far, and we're so grateful to the series curator, Stefan Solomon, for bringing uh, this series to Tate, for proposing it and working with us over I'm not even sure how long, <laughs> three years, a year and a half since I've been here um, uh, to put this series together. Um, Counter History series is one of three strands in the Tate Film Program. It's where we work, it's usually only one or two per year because they are larger series where we work with researchers um, to put together a weekend of films that either will, that will be kind of challenge a stereotype of either a movement in art or film history, or in this case, um, well, there's several things going on. We kind of have film movement that's challenging what people know to be Tropicalia more as a music and art movement, but also within the kind of films relating to Tropicalia, films that are challenging the legacy, resisting it, restoring it. Um, so it's been really quite a dynamic program. We thank you so much, Stephanie. And for, for all of these dialogues happening between the films and also all of the conversations. It's been really enlightening and really, really wonderful. Um, our, our other two strands I'll mention very quickly. We've seen in the slides, uh, Art of Cinema is a monthly, sometimes bi-monthly, um, series of premieres of new works by artists. So um, at, at the end of November and early December, we have Pat O'Neill, Trinity Minha, and Eric Baudelaire joining us. And we also have Pioneers, which are a retrospective series. Um, we have uh, in January a uh, retrospective of the film works of Anna Mendieta. And the following one will be in April, where we look at the films of Babette Mengolt. Babette uh, has a display on, on level three of the Blavatnik building, actually the same floor as the Odesica Tropicalia display. Um, the building will probably be shut by the time we finish today, but we urge you tomorrow to go out and see. We have 11 free collection displays in the building. They're really wonderful, so uh, if you're joining us tomorrow, we have time between the screenings. Uh, please go take a look. Uh, I won't say too much more except a couple thank yous to our team, Andrea Lisoni, Maria Gibert, uh, Sebastian, Lauren, and Camila, who's joining us uh, er, this evening is doing our soft titling for quite a long film with quite a lot of dialogue, so <laughs> thank you in advance to Camila. Um, and uh, as well to, uh, well, we, we haven't even said this yet, to the University of Reading, who has been really, really fantastic partner for this series. And now I'd like to introduce Stefan Solomon to, uh, to talk about this program. Um, thank you, Carly, and uh, thanks for attending tonight to this uh, part of the program, uh, El Dorado, where we'll be screening uh, Adare de Pedra, The Age of Stone by Anna Vaz, and Adare de Terra, uh, The Age of the Earth by Glaber Rocha, Glaber Rocha's final film. Um, I won't say too much um, before I introduce Anna, who will talk about her film and the relationship between her film and, and Glaber's film. Um, but just to say that um, what we're about to see is, I think, from all accounts and from what I discovered, the first time that Glaber Rocha's film has been screened with the reels in a different order. Um, in, uh, as Glober was making the film, he made several interventions to um, put his own stamp, shall we say, on the film. Uh, there was a long editing process involving three separate editors um, working on the film in three blocks in three different parts of Brazil. Um, but Glauber also decided to erase the, or to cut any opening credits and closing credits from the film. Um, so already there's this sense that it could start and end anywhere. Um, but then he gave a final instruction that was to say that any projectionist could potentially play the reels in any order in which, in which they wanted. Um, so he threatened to send out the reels without numbers so that the projectionist wouldn't even know. Uh, we do have them numbered, um, but our projectionist tonight has, has chosen them in a certain order. And luckily we have um, Camilla to provide the live soft subtitling so that we can keep up with the, with the dialogue. Um, and uh, I'd like to introduce now uh, Anna Vaz, who uh, I met uh, last year for the first time in, in Paris. Uh, she's a filmmaker that many of you may know. She was born in Brasilia, um, but has studied in Australia and in France, 
and now resides in Lisbon. Uh, she's the, um, she's made many works, including the film you're going to see tonight, uh, another beautiful film, Occidente, and a film that uh, I first encountered her work through last year, Atera, um, from 2016. Um, and uh, sh her work, I think, and my discussions with her about her work and its relation to Glauber and in relation to Cinema Novo and to the past of Brazilian Film history really helped to inspire um, these dialogues in a lot in a lot of ways. Um, so I'm very grateful to to her and for our conversations to helping uh, for helping to clarify my thoughts about this. So please welcome now Anna Vaz. Um, boa noite. Good evening. Um, I wanted to start by thanking you as well, Stephen, by the wonderful possibility of being in dialogue, um, not just about the Cinema Novo, but about Brazilian contemporary culture and how it made connect to the history of the 60s and 70s in Brazil. Um, it was really important to me to meet you um, a year ago in Paris, having that also I did my studies in cinema in Australia, and that's where I learned a lot about experimental film, which is the school or the astro tribe that I come from. So for me, it was a really interesting tri triangulation to meet you in France, having that we have, in one way or another, made studies in similar institutions in Australia, and now we're here speaking about Tropicalia in London. So it's a lot of uh, displacements but I'm really pleased about that, so thank you. And thank you for the Tate, um, Andrea, Carly, Maria, Sebastian, the projectionist, for their wonderful attention with this very finely curated uh, show. Um, it's hard to, to introduce uh, the, 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 the evening because I feel like a lot of things are more to be felt rather than be discussed, but I feel that there are some clues or hints that are important for us to know before we watch A Idade da Pedra and how it may relate to A Idade da Terras. For me, Glauber Rocha's most complex um, and radical film. I tried to, to speak about this in an essay that's in the, in the catalog uh, compiled by Stephen, but it's just the beginning of what I think is a really long and infinite conversation. Um, I, I think that the, the way to start speaking about this is that whilst Idade da Terra Glauber's final film um, already begins by multiplying um, the kind of central figures that it's dealing with. So we have a number of different Christs that have different origins, ontologies, modes of speaking. So in that sense, I already think that it's a step away from Glauber's um, earlier works in which polyphony and the, the, the kind of entanglements between these characters makes, uh, makes it a film that I would say has no center. And this is what, for me, is really interesting about this film. As for Idade da Pedra, the film that I made in 2013, um, initially my idea wasn't to engage directly with Glauber Rocha, but for me it was impossible to make a film that in one way or another wanted to reflect upon the building of Brazil's modernist, messianic capital of Brasilia without thinking of Idade da Terra, having that it is the film that Glauber kind of goes through the three different capitals of Brazil, tracing the ways in which one aims to efface the other in this continuous movement of, of modernity and its messianic kind of thread. Um, I don't think that Idade da Pedra is directly engaging with Tropicalia, and it's a legacy that, as we know, and some of the conversations we've been having, um, needs to be taken with a great deal of salt. Um, because as we know, um, there is an enormous problem with the kind of export image that it may um, generate about Brazil as being this um, idyllic, tropical, coastal environment, when in fact it is much more diverse than that. So I think that Idade da Pedra goes more as to the inner badlands um, of the country, in a kind of a Western that tries to reawaken a different kind of imaginary about the cultures of the badlands, the backlands of Brazil, in the region where Brasilia was built. Um, without wanting to say much more, I, the only thing that I would say is that perhaps Idade da Pedra is my animist response to Idade da Terra. So it's a film that tries to reverse the focus on man as a centralizing and totalizing figure and tries to see what is around and within and alongside um, man um, in its great diversity. So without much further ado, I just want to say that I'm also really honored to be um, attending and projecting this film alongside Hosh's film, and I think it's going to be epic and performative in a way. So I hope you enjoyed the voyage. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 